Hey, here's one and two. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pita bread pizza. Now you designed your pita bread pizzas last week and your job for today or sometime this week is going to be to make the pizza that you designed. Now, to get started with, there are some things that you are going to need. You will need some pita bread. Now I've chosen a wholemeal pita bread. I like wholemeal pita breads anyway, but I've chosen them specifically today because wholemeal pita bread is higher in fiber than white pita bread and it's lower in sugars as well. Okay, and I'm trying to think about making my pizza a part of a balanced meal. So I've gone for something that's high in fiber and a bit lower in sugars than I could have gone for. You are also going to need some tomato puree for your base. You will need some cheese. You will also need something for your topping. So I've got some red pepper. I've chosen to put red pepper on mine. You might just want cheese on yours and that's absolutely fine too, but I'm gonna pop some red pepper on mine. And then I've also got uh, some cucumber and carrot because while my pizza is in the oven, I'm going to chop some of those so that I can have those on the side with my pizza. So, oh, you will also need a spatula and a cheese grater. Okay, let's get started. So first thing is to wash your hands. Now I've washed my hands already. I just did it before I started the video. Okay, so you guys can pause your video now and go and wash your hands and then come back. Okay, super job. So we should all have nice clean hands now to move on to the next stage of the video. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is to put your topping, your um, pita bread, sorry, onto a nice flat surface. So hopefully you can all see my pita bread there. I'm just gonna move that so that's nice and close and you can see it properly. So there's the pita bread there. I've put it onto a base on my surface. Okay, and next I'm going to put some of the tomato puree on to my pizza. I'm just going to start off with a little blob of, of uh, tomato puree. And I can always add a little bit more if I need it. Now, one of our important skills in our DT lessons is learning to uh, cut and spread and grate and use different equipment for different purposes. So spreading is one of those important skills that we're practicing today. So you want to try and be gentle, otherwise you might rip your pita bread base and you don't want to do that um, if you can help it. Okay, so you should be able to see now that I've spread my tomato puree I'm trying to spread it fairly evenly across the whole base. Okay, I'm just leaving a little bit around the edges, not spread. I'm gonna put my spatula down to one side. Okay, and I've got my base there. What I'm going to do next is to grate my cheese. Okay, so if I move my pizza base over here for a second, actually I'm going to pop it on this tray over here that I've got ready for when it goes into the oven. So I'll pop that on there for a second. For the next stage for grating your cheese, you're going to need your cheese grater and you're going to need your cheese. Okay, so I'm going to oops, get the cheese out of the packet if I can and then I'm going to grate it. So cheese um, is a really good source, it's a dairy product, okay, and it's also a good source of protein. So I'm going to try and get some cheese on the top of my pizza. Now when you're grating, I'll try and turn it around so that you can see, you need to make sure that your fingers are nowhere near the sharp bits on your grater, because those are sharp like a knife. So what you want to try and do is have your hand at the back of your block of cheese, you can have it in the packet if that's how you prefer to do it, I've only got a little bit left here. And then you're going to keep your fingers away and hold the grater with your other hand. And then you're just gently going to push the cheese down the grater, making sure that your fingers are nowhere near, and your thumb, this thumb on the top, making sure that they're nowhere near the sharp bits of the cheese grater because it hurts when you grate your fingers. I've done it before and I don't recommend it. Okay, so you just want enough cheese uh, so that you think it's going to cover the top of your pizza. I always do too much cheese, um, but just estimate, I think, is a good idea because you can always make a bit more. Okay, so once you've got your cheese on your surface, like you can hopefully see there, 
you can then put that on top of your pita bread base. So this is our base that we made a minute ago with our tomato puree. And now I'm just going to pop my cheese and I'm going to try and scatter it, spread it fairly evenly across. I have got too much cheese again, as usual. Just spread it across gently. You don't want it too close to the edges if you can help it, otherwise it just all bubbles off when it goes in the oven. Okay, so there we go, that should be plenty of cheese. So I've got my cheese on the top there. I'm also going to put some red pepper on the top of my pizza that I've chosen to make. So I've got my red pepper over here, I've cut it in half already, and I'm just going to cut some strips of red pepper. And with my knife, you can see, so I'm holding my red pepper with one hand, Okay, and I've got my fingers again away from the edge of the red pepper. So there's plenty of room between my finger and where the red pepper ends and where I'm cutting. I'm holding my knife in my other hand. Okay, I've got my thumb on the top and I'm clutching around the knife with my fingers. And then I am just pressing. You might actually like to put your finger on the top and your thumb on the side. It's up to you how you do it. But however you do it, you need to make sure that your fingers and thumbs and any other things that can be cut are away from the knife. Okay, because we don't want any cut fingers. There we go. And I'm just kind of using a bit of a sawing motion there to cut my pepper. Okay. So you had plenty of practice actually before half term at cutting because you guys made a fruit salad. So I'm sure you will be experts at cutting already. Okay, I think that's probably enough red pepper. I'm gonna pop that back to one side and I'm just going to pop my bits of red pepper onto the top of my pizza. Now you have all designed your own pizzas and I'm sure you've come up with some really lovely ideas for toppings. You might not like red pepper, you don't have to use red pepper, it's entirely up to you. This is just what I had in my house this morning, okay, to come on, come on and show you. So, red pepper, I'm gonna pop those across there, that's quite a lot of red pepper actually. Um, and you might like to cut it in smaller chunks, but for speed, I'm going to go with that, okay? Then I'm just gonna, I may as well use my cheese. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more cheese over the top. And that is my pita bread pizza ready to go in the oven. So you're going to need your oven, Turn this up so you can see me again. You're going to need your oven at around about 180 degrees. So you're going to need to ask an adult probably to help you with this bit. So I'm going to turn my oven on. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. But here is my oven and I'm going to turn it on to 180 degrees. And an adult will be able to help you do that in your house. You're then going to need a baking tray like this one, just so that you don't make a mess of the inside of your oven. And you can just put your pita bread base straight onto your baking tray, like this, okay? What I'm going to do then is I am going to put this into the oven. I'm going to put it in for five minutes, first of all. Okay, so I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes and then I'll see whether it's ready and if it's not, it can go in for a little bit longer, okay? So I'll pop it in the oven now. And I'm going to set myself a timer for five minutes. Now you might like to preheat your oven first. That's probably something I should have done. I forgot. Okay, so if you want to, you can always do the oven step before you put the other things in. If you've watched this video once before and now you're re-watching it, that might be a good plan. Okay, so while my pizza is in the oven, I've got five minutes, well, four minutes and 45 seconds now actually, I am going to make some carrot and cucumber to put on the plate, or so, to cut, sorry, and peel some carrot and, and cucumber. Now, if you're peeling um, carrots, or if you're peeling anything, actually, you need to be very careful of your fingers. Again, a peeler, you can see my peeler here, is very sharp. This bit in the middle is designed to cut, and it will cut, it will peel, sorry, it's designed to peel, it will peel, uh, vegetables, it will also peel fingers. So keep your fingers away from the sharp bit of your peeler. So I've got my carrot here and I'm going to peel away from me 
okay, in this direction. I'm gonna hold the carrot at the top and I'm gonna make sure the peeler doesn't go anywhere near my fingers. So I'll pop this back down so you can see. I'm seeing my messy cooking area now. You pop, I'll use my um, pepper board, I think. If you want a clean board, you can use a clean board, it's up to you. I'm just going to do it on here. So I'm gonna hold my carrot at the top and I'm going to peel away from me, making sure I'm not touching my fingers, I'm not get going anywhere near my fingers. This is a small carrot, which is making it hard to do actually. If you use a bigger carrot, it might be a bit easier. Then I'm going to turn my carrot around so that I'm holding the other end and just peel the bits at the base that I missed the first time. So, next you want to cut your carrots. You're going to need your knife again. Thinking really carefully about how you're holding your knife. So I'm going to cut off, I don't know if you can see that actually. There we go, you can cut off both ends and then you can cut your carrot however you want to. So I'm gonna cut mine into chunks. And I'm gonna, just making sure my fingers are out of the way each time I cut. So keeping my fingers to the edges away from the sharp bit of my knife because again we don't want any cut fingers now serving my pizza with a side of carrot and cucumber is a good way for me to get a little bit more um, fruit and veg into my meal that i'm preparing for my lunch today okay so i'm thinking about having a balanced diet i've got my carbohydrate base I've got with um, my high fiber and low sugar, I've got uh, some dairy, some protein, and I've got some fruit and veg in there as well. There's obviously a little bit of fat in the cheese, but we want some fat in our diet. It is an important part of, of our diet. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly go and wash my cucumber because I didn't do that. And then I will be back. Okay, so with my cucumber, I'm going to do the same as I did with my carrot. I'm just going to cut a chunk off there to use. And I'm going to cut that up into strips as well. Being very careful with my knife, holding my knife in the same way. And just chopping through to make chunks of cucumber. Okay, right. What I'm going to do now is pop those onto a plate, ready for when my pizza is ready. And then that can just wait there, ready to go with my pizza once it's come out of the oven. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that to one side so that it's ready. And it shouldn't be too long until my pizza comes out of the oven. I am going to pause the video here and I will come back to you when my pizza's ready. See you in a while. Hello again, everybody. So I've just finished my pita bread pizza. I've just got it out of the oven using my oven gloves to make sure I'm nice and safe. Um, again, you'll need an adult to help you with that stage. Here is my pita bread pizza. Let me break careful getting it off my tray. You can see it's nice and hot here and it's cooked and it's got my uh, my cheese nicely mashed on the top. So I'm gonna pop that onto my plate and put my hot tray down carefully. And you will see that I've got a finished plate here. Let me move my screen down of a pita bread pizza with some carrot and some cucumber to go with it. Okay, so I am going to go and uh, cut my pizza and enjoy it now. I hope you have lots of fun making your own pit bread pizzas. I would love to see them on Seesaw. Have fun. Bye.